And how is everyone? Morning. This is a ridiculous time to get up. Who gets up this early? Quarter past ten in the morning. Absolutely obscene. Ah, uh, yes. 5 a.m. See, that's what time I normally go to bed. But yet, here we are with a fresh cup of tea. I'm just waiting on my breakfast from downstairs. There's a cafe under my office, and I've ordered some breakfast. So uh, when it's ready, they're going to message me. It's so bright there. Yes, it is. I haven't adjusted any of the camera settings. This is just normal normal settings for nighttime streaming, because it's easier. So I don't really know what I'm doing here, but I thought it'd be nice to start the day with a, with a chat, maybe a bit of DOS. We can look at some discs, potentially. Um, nothing too intense. Um, let's go to the disc cam. So, there's a few discs of interest in here. I mean, they're all quite interesting. I thought we could take a look at schoolwork, mainly because that is definitely not my writing. So, I think that's my friend Michael's writing. So, I'm going to possibly take a look at that. Let's have a look at this. There's some stuff on there. QBasic. There's a QBasic disc here, which could be some more QBasic stuff. Oh, it's a Commodore 64 emulator. I don't really know a lot about it, to be honest. With my breakfast. Check out my breakfast. Look at this. Oh, yes. Oh, look at that. Look at that delight. I've got some toast here. We've got some sausages. It's a bit hard to see with that camera. Sausages, beans, tomato, some potato croquettes, a bit of bacon. Mushrooms, a bit of fake egg. Nice. It is a good idea. It is a good day for some uh, floppies. Let's have a look at some floppy disks, shall we? Let's take a look at QBasic. Because this is likely to be a load of stuff I made again. It should still run though. Oh, okay. So this is this is this is. Another attempt at when I tried to make an operating system, or not an, operate, uh, not an operating system, a graphical user environment in BASIC. So, yeah, this is not, this is a GUI I made because I was trying to make an entire operating system at one point, and then on these disks seems to be various states of that attempt. I can terminate a program that's running, apparently, and I can exit. No, I can. Yes, I can. Bye. Have a nice DOS. Oh, lovely. Oh, some other things. There we got decide.bass. Decide the project version 2.0. Type in your question. Should I have more tea? I think yes to your question. Should I have more tea? Desert.bass. Desert tank battle. It's like it's like a terrible version of Gorillas with no graphics. It's a puppet. You Welcome to the Last Hulk. Copyright Power Productions Limited Revised 2.0 edition. You are about to enter the world of aliens, demons, and things too terrible to even imagine. You are about to enter the Last Hulk. Your name is Bogan. And you are the last warrior alive on mission 23. Again, there's no punctuation in this sentence. Mission 23 ended when the vessel was attacked by hundreds of unknown aliens. Some have been killed by the crew, which are now dead. You must get off the mission 23 vessel and into an escape pod. But hurry, time is running out. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah, these are all programs I made when I was like 12. Let the mission commence. You are standing in a small room of a vessel. The smell of death fills the misty air. A chill runs down your spine as you look around. The only thing you can hear is the faint sound of the air ducts. Slowly you edge your way forward. You can do the following. This is the same as the other game. Walk down a small passage labelled 233, stay where you are and cry, or go up a hole in the ceiling. 
stay where you are and cry. Let's let's just try that. Oh, it, it just boots you back to key basic. Uh, go up a hole in the ceiling. The game is not finished. It's like a game released by Electronic Arts. Hulk 2.basfo. That might hold some promise. Oh! You start to walk down the narrow passage on guard all the time. In the distance, you hear strange noises and loose your footing. You are flat on your face and there is an object in front of you which resembles a claw. Pick up the claw and get up. Pick up the claw and lob it for no reason. Yeah, let's do that. You get up and throw the claw as far as you can. Then you hear a sound and quite a loud sound coming your way from the direction you threw the claw in. You stare into the darkness and as you do so, an alien comes flying out. He rips your face off and you die. Iceberg. Let's go. Your hull is badly damaged and you have no weapons. As you slowly limp through treacherous iceberg waters, you become aware of an enemy ship following you. The ship can detect you, but strangely not the icebergs. So your best chance is to lure it into hitting one. You will see a grid on your screen. You are represented by the white face. Your enemy is the black face. Bad choice of words. And the icebergs are stars. You can move north, south, east or west to try and lure the enemy ship into an iceberg. If you hit an iceberg, you will sink. And if the enemy catches you, it's game over. Ha! Oh, oh, ha! It works! So this is me on the left here. And the enemy is at the top. And I need to smash him into the icebergs. So this is very rudimentary. You're safe. He's hit one. Very rudimentary AI. Okay, we've got uh, lottery. We've done lottery. Maze.bass. I think, that, yeah, this is the Maze Master. So I remember this one. Oh, this is it. This is the dog's bollocks. You can tell that all my energy went into this. Look, look at this. Look at the startup screen. I replicated the kind of Doom startup screen. Look at that. It even t gives you a system speed indication. Your mission is to kill the evil maze master. To do this, you must make your way through each maze to the last level where you will face a challenge with the maze master. You must succeed or die. Oh, there's stuff moving. Oh, Jesus Christ. So I need to get to the exit over on the right-hand side, I think, whilst avoiding these randomly moving enemies and these randomly placed mines. I remember I couldn't, I couldn't be bothered to work out a method to create a proper maze, even though that's quite easy. So I just instead opted to have a screen randomly place all these um, pipe symbols everywhere to create a kind of pseudo maze but i'm pretty sure that because of that it's possible sometimes to get stuck in little pockets oh christ a fatal error has occurred please tell peter about this error and he will fix it so if you try and exit out of the game, it just throws an error. That's quite interesting. Robot.bass. Robot invaders. Earth is being invaded by robots. You have plenty of weapons, but for each type of robot, you must have exactly the right one. Code symbols for each robot will flash up on your screen. Quickly press the key with that symbol on it to destroy the robot. Beware. Some need the shift key too, and the space key. Oh, it's like a, just like a, it's like the, the typing zombie game. Oh, I was the original creator of the zombie typing game. Yes, this is much better as well. Stupid cowboy shootout. <laughs> I, I was, <laughs> what? It goes so fast. It's obviously been programmed for a much slower computer. Let's try and make it a bit slower to see if we can 
get any semblance of dignity. All right, there we go. There we go. Oh, come on. That was spot on. Oh, it doesn't give me long enough to respond. 10,000? Try that. Yes! He did! Sky Bomber? Sky Bomber by Peter Lee, copyright Power Productions, 1996. Huh? Oh, bit older than 12. Press any key to start. Press B to drop a bomb on the city below. Okay. Warp speed. I think we better do snail speed, given this computer is clearly faster. Bombs. 130. Oh, look at this. Oh, yes. That's what I'm talking about. So we have to destroy every building. Destroy a bar chart. <laughs> well, I thought this was going to be easy, but it's actually quite tricky. 24 bombs. Oh, this is going to be tight. I'm not, I'm not going to do it. I don't think I even can do it anymore. I will... I'd like to see what happens when I finish, but... I also want to play Traitor's Castle. Your king, the king. The king is waging a fierce and bloody battle against the traitor Baron. You are one of the king's best shooters, and you must shoot the Baron's guards as they lift their head above the battlements. The computer will print a row containing eight blocks and a face. The number keys one to nine correspond to the position of the face in the row. You have a short time to press the correct key and hit the face before it disappears. How many men can you hit? Oh, Christ! Whoa, <laughs> look how cheery they are! Imagine them appearing in the back, <laughs> in the crem cremation of a castle. Just, hey! <laughs> so happy to be shooting! <sighs> I think that's it. I think we've been through all the basic games which are on here. So we've got... Let's read read that text. You might like to know... <laughs> Shit. You might like to know this little piece of information I'm about to give you. You have just logged onto a disk containing the LP6 virus. This... <laughs> oh, fuck. This will contaminate all EXE and COM files and will travel onto all disks used. The only way of getting rid of this virus is there is no way. It is for one of the latest and hardest to detect. I hope you will enjoy using Windows. <laughs> oh dear! Why have I got this on a disc? Why did I put this on a disc labelled Typing Tutor? What? What was I thinking? Didn't I think older me is clearly going to come back to this disc in 25 years? I'm just. I'm gonna carry on. I'm gonna. I'm gonna pre presume. I'm gonna pretend that that's just a joke that I've made for myself. <laughs> you, you prankster! I'm just gonna carry on, regardless. See, this is worrying. When when there's files like ha ha. I bet you like this joke. Can't find any reference for that virus. It's probably some, it's probably nonsense. I hope it is. See, I'm concerned now about this tutor program called tutor.exe. See, that doesn't look good, does it? That doesn't look like how it's supposed to look. I... <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Oh no. Oh god. Fuck. <laughs> oh shit. Every every file is just like ha ha. Oh no. No, oh, this is oh god, what have I found here? Right, okay. It's fine. I know what we can do. Here 
I've got Thunderbyte antivirus on these discs. Let's install Thunderbyte antivirus and see if we can detect this virus. It was probably, like I probably had this disc and I was like, I probably thought, this is, I, I'm gonna remember that this disc I've put a virus on and I won't touch it. I'll, I'll use the typing tutor because I'm never gonna run that. I'll put it on here and I'll keep it safe and secure. And then 25 years later, I've just completely forgotten and just infected my own computer. So this is Thunderbite antivirus. So the problem with uh, antivirus programs from the 90s, of course, is they're not updated on the internet. So if you've got a antivirus program from March 95 and then you get a virus the next year, it's not going to know anything about it. It can try and detect it. Sometimes they could, but it's unreliable. I mean, that file said, good luck next time you start Windows. But to be honest, anyone who watched the last stream will know that we were already having severe problems with Windows anyway. So unless that virus had infected some other disks as well, which is possible, because this copy of Windows is shafted now, not just because of a hot dog color scheme either. The... Okay. TB scan. Start scanning. Full scan. Two lost clusters. 7,162 files with invalid size. <laughs> oh dear. Oh dear! Use a disk repair utility. Okay, we'll try the disk repair utility. It didn't find any viruses as such. Okay. Look at that, it's got even brighter now. I turned the camera settings down earlier and now it's like, ching! Right, let's go onto a different disk. Uh, this is Trug, 256 color BMP and uh, S-Golf DOS Runner, which I think we've done before on a previous stream, but I'm just going back through all the discs again because otherwise we'll miss some out and um, some will get lost. And no one, no one wants that. But then you can't really do a lot with a Spectrum other than play Spectrum games. Drug in hell! <laughs> Prepare to meet the challenge of Siberia. Man, this game is tough. Oh, I'm terrible. Well, I'm terrible at this. Terrible. Die. Just die. You can't exit the game either. You, you can't even press control alt delete. Now this, this, okay, this disc. We need to talk about this disc. Because this disc says schoolwork. This was given to me by my mate Michael, I can tell because it's his writing. But I'm sure that there's some dodgy pictures on here. I'm sure that the schoolwork was just some sort of cover up for the actual contents of this disc. So what have we got here? Basic file? Flight dot... Oh, this is this genuinely schoolwork, I think. Geography dot WPS. Geography 2 dot WPS. House 1 dot text. Let's open up... Let's open some of this up in QBasic. So we've got sim dot... Fire escape simulator. Simulation of emergency systems in different buildings. So this is actually a program my mate Ben made where you can load up building plans and then you can simulate what happens if a fire goes off. So all the hash, the hash marks of a fire spreading, the people are the faces and the X is the exit. And it's supposed to simulate <laughs> how people would react in this situation if there was a fire. 
So people are still alive, 20. People killed by the fire, 2. The AI isn't very realistic, because even though the exits are easily accessible, the people are just standing right next to the flaming hot fire. The burning hot fire. And then we have a subscript out of range error. This is, this is how a fire spreads. You should pay attention, because this is completely accurate. We've also got add.bass, which is just an address and telephone database. And pass.bass, which I think is a really early attempt to try and get people's passwords by replicating what the logon screen at school looked like. It used to originally look like this. Images. Look how bright it is outside. <laughs> Let me just adjust the camera again. That's a little bit better. Okay, I'm just going to check what images are on this. Yeah, this is the first image. Probably something to do with homework. The, I think these are my these are all my mates' images. I think this is my mate Ben's brother playing the guitar back in ninety something. Any ideas? Any takers? I do not know what that is. This is a cartoon. This has been scanned using an early scanner. You can tell it's one of those hand scanners. As you can see, the distortion around the edges and the lines. So uh, one of the computers at school had a hand scanner hooked up to it, a really low resolution black and white one. So people used to scan stuff in for homework. Some more pictures. Yeah, this is, this is genuinely all sort of like homework stuff. Maybe if we, let's see if I can open some, uh, text files <laughs> which I'm also a bit nervous about because I know but <laughs> my mate Ben he used to write he used to write erotic fiction 14 years or so ago in 1981 there lived a newborn child he was 19 pounds and he was called Ben Jones see this is my mate Ben he's written his own autobiography so that's Cromer High School which uh, I went to as well and where I met Ben Jones Peter, Peter giving us all the info to find erotic Ben. I'm going to have to send him this, uh, the stream VOD after this and say, look, mate, I've got all your files from school here, if you're interested. I'm not sure why I've got all Ben's files. Seems a bit, seems a bit strange. <laughs> what? All students, please note, you may not use your own floppy diskettes. The use of MS-DOS and QBASIC is banned. There are no exceptions to this. Anyone caught high hacking the network will be banned completely. Bringing in discs of games, installing games on the network server is allowed by member of the Ben Jones fan club. Please check your work before printing. Ben Jones. I'm going to have to message my mate. I'm not going to message Ben. I'm going to message my other friend and tell him. I'm going to send him a picture of all this stuff I've uncovered. What's Ben Jones doing now? He messaged me the other day, actually. He messaged me and invited me to go to... They've got a new VR escape room experience in Norwich. He asked if I wanted to go to that. I haven't got back to him yet, but I'm going to now. <laughs> ben Jones, the myth, the legend. Is he a comedy writer? This was, this was his... This was his erotic, his erotic writing, just about the school network. Well, what's the time? It's almost half past twelve. I think that's been a successful morning stream. I think we've done, I think we've done quite a lot. I guess until next time. Toodaloo. Have a good remainder of your week, people, and I'll see you as soon as I possibly can.